Okay. Hi. So I'm Paul Hansma, and I have with me Alice Aldrich, and we're both uh, emeritus professors here at UCSB. And we're going to show you this um, demonstration of how chronic pain works. Okay. So, and so if we start, um, let's just start by if you hold out your hand, and with the other hand raise your index finger, notice that at first you just feel sensation, right? Mm -hmm. If you make it raise a little bit more, you start to feel a little bit it hurts, yeah. a little bit hurt. Yeah. So you let it go, mm -hmm. and fine, right? So let's see what happens the here. The model, what's going on? So if you raise that finger a little bit, what you'll see is the signal from that finger is here in the safe level. This is the sensation. There's no pain; it's just sensation. But if you raise it a little bit more and you start getting into something that might be a little caution, you start getting a little pain, you raise it a little bit more, up mm -hmm. into a danger zone, you get more and more pain. You let it go, and the pain goes away. And, and this is how pain should work. It's an accurate representation of the danger. So raise it again, and you just see how the pain is an accurate representation of the danger. Hmm. However, what can happen is if there's an injury, something different can happen. So raise the finger all the way up till you get an injury. Okay, okay. Let it go. And now the signal doesn't go down right away because the injury has to heal. But gradually over days, weeks, months, the injury heals and the signal goes down. Mm -hmm. But still pain there though. Down, mm -hmm. but still pain there though. There's still pain. What do you see that might be causing that pain? Oh. Probably something in your mind. Don't something you think? in your mind, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's these neuroplastic changes in, here in the mind that have changed um, your experience of pain because all pain is generated, the experience of pain is generated in the brain, but you have the signal and then it's processed by the brain. And you can have neuroplastic changes in the brain <laughs> that cause pain to persist <laughs> even when you're safe. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So your mind's tricking you in a way. It is. Your mind's tricking you. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly right. And when your mind is tricking you like this, then if you start to move your finger, even though it's safe. Oh, look, it thinks it's painful, huh? Exactly. Wow. Oh, and even went higher this time without any problems. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. So as you say, your mind is is um, tricking you. So. You know, Alice is a is a meditation teacher, um, and maybe you can give some perspective from what you've learned about meditation and so on about what might be happening in the mind to make these oh, changes. Yeah, sure. You know, when we feel pain, um, we tend to begin telling stories about it. So we get a little bit of pain, and we think, "Oh my gosh, it's never going to stop," or I. Um, I'm never going to be able to move my leg again, or I better get to the doctor, or I better take an anti-inflammatory. We, we make a whole bunch of stories when all that's really happened is some unpleasant sensation, in this case in the finger, and uh, so our, our reaction to the pain is a lot of the problem. Uh, if we can just quiet our mind and just feel the sensations themselves, we start to notice that pain isn't one solid mass, that there's little bits of stabbing and burning and tingling and so forth in different parts of the finger. And in fact, the pain's moving around. It's not even in one place. And so we can kind of step back and get interested in these sensations instead of catastrophizing, <laughs> which is what we tend to do, of course. We catastrophize. Um, we can we can then calm our mind enough to maybe not let this happen so much anyway. Um, I imagine it's going to happen no matter what to some extent, right, because the mind is what it is, but we can probably reduce that. Yes, you can definitely, by the ways you suggest, reduce the these neuroplastic changes which are coupled into the fear and the kind of anxiety thoughts you're, you're, you're talking. talking about. The, and you get into kind of pain fear loops in the brain, yeah. which ironically can persist even when the signal goes down. Yeah. These pain fear loops can persist. And it, at this point, um, there's nothing you can really do at the level of the finger um, because the finger's already safe. Yeah. 
and the pain is there, but you're tempted to do something because you feel the pain in the finger. So you think the pain problem is in the finger, but actually the pain is, is the problem is these neuroplastic changes. And so um, sometimes when people see these, they don't want to move anymore, you know, because they see, like, even if I move my finger just oh, a little wow, bit, yeah. you know, I get intense pain. And even though you're actually safe, you're going to get intense pain. And so they say, well, maybe I won't move so much. But unfortunately, what that does is it further increases these neuroplastic changes because the brain doesn't get used to feeling the ordinary motions. And so when it does feel emotion, it's like, whoa. Other things, catastrophization, as you were mentioning, will this never go away? Is it going to get worse? Is this the rest of my life? Can increase these neuroplastic oh, changes, yeah. which make the brain more sensitive uh -huh. to pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so once you get into a situation like this, there's nothing you can do at the level of the finger. You have to reverse these neuroplastic changes. Mm -hmm. Do you and know how to do that, how we can do that? Yes. In fact, there's ways to reverse these neuroplastic changes. So try just holding down the education button briefly. Okay. Good. Uh -huh. So as you held that down, notice that it went down a little bit. Oh, uh-huh. Now, education would be just the kind of thing you were talking about, namely realizing that our elaboration on the pain and our freaking out about the pain is really contributing to the suffering and yes. so on of the pain. And education, you can learn from books like, for example, here's a really good one, Unlearn Your Pain by Howard Schubiner that we've used. There's another one called The Way Out by Alan Gordon. Another one that we've used with chronic pain subjects that's really good comes from Lorimer Mosley and David Butler, the Explain Pain Protectometer. Uh, there's some other books by um, that group. There, there's a lot of good resources out there for people who can give you this education hmm. that can help reduce the mm -hmm. pain. Mm -hmm. And do the, most of those books talk about kind of stepping back from your pain a little bit and just becoming an observer of it? That's a major thing. Uh, mm -hmm. In the case of um, the Howard Schubiner book, there's also education to help you identify stressors in your life, oh. either in your present life or in your past life, that may be contributing to your sense of being in danger. Oh, uh -huh. sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, like, okay. yeah I, I relate to that. I, I. Uh, my knees bother me a lot, and I know that if I do breaststroke, I'm going to really suffer. Yeah. Because I have in the past, you know. So. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have those triggers. I have those triggers. Yeah. Those triggers, and yeah. and. Yeah, your mind took over. <laughs> Whoa. But what you're talking about specifically of like looking at the pain through a lens of safety, mm -hmm. that that's um, especially this one here. Press the somatic tracking. Somatic tracking. And other things that can help are gentle movement um, and biofeedback. Biofeedback so you can learn to calm yourself. So if you try pressing multiple buttons at once, for instance, try more than one button at once, you can bring down that sensitization oh, that. Uh -huh. really fast. And go ahead and bring it all the way down by pressing more buttons. Okay, and so you can get to a situation where now pain is your friend again. Mm -hmm. And and when you and if I move this if you just move a little this, bit, it doesn't it doesn't go up. No oh, look pain. Look at that. That's great. So I've trained trained my brain not to feel up and there it is because now it truly is in danger. Exactly. That's right. Wow. So now pain is your friend again. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then I learned about doing gentle exercises. If you do gentle exercises, very gentle exercises. I learned this from Murray Hayashida a really good physical therapist here. Oh, look, you do gentle exercises, down. yeah, you can help the body heal. And uh, and so this is a way of helping the body heal. So you're, um, he you're healing your mind in a way. So first, yep, you heal yeah. the mind and then you can heal the body. Now, with the shoulder pain, I made a big mistake though because I had the physical therapy and all, but I wanted to get better right away. Okay? Right, sure. Right, so I was going to really go for oh. it. And so I had a situation where I had pain and inflammation, so there's some signal, and I had a lot of neuroplastic changes, um, which I didn't know about yet. Mm -hmm. And so I had a situation like this, and I wanted to recover. So I started doing the physical therapy, 
vigorously Ooh. because I wanted to recover quickly. Oh gosh, that didn't help at all. Not only didn't it help, it made it worse and worse. Because I kept myself in, I kept getting myself into this situation of pain and, uh, and my body's more and more freaking out. Yeah. They can, couldn't trust me kind of yeah. the way. And so, but what I had to do was first get rid of this neuroplastic component of the pain with education and somatic tracking and so on. And once I got rid of that low enough, then I could start to do these gentle movements to get rid of the, of the inflammation. And so it's a real important thing with physical therapy for chronic pain is not to push it too hard. I'm really grateful to Murray Hayashida for teaching me this. It's really important not to push it too far. Just do gentle oh, motions. Oh. Boy, I, I can see that in my own exercise. Like, okay. <laughs> that explains. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. And I really appreciate you working with me today to make this uh, this video and I hope it's uh, helpful to our viewers. So thank you Alice and thank you viewers. Yeah, thank you very much Paul, this is great. I learned a lot. Okay, bye for now. <laughs> All right, that was great. You was did it? wonderful. <laughs> oh man, you did great.